pinna hematoma. Things you will need to assess a patient with a possible pinna hematoma are a 10 ml syringe with a white needle, 10 ml of 1% lidocaine, chlorhexidine wipes, a scalpel, gauze, betadine, a sick bowl, K-band bandages, dental roll, silk suture, a suture kit, a suction and suction tip, and normal saline. It's important to know that the pinna is a well vascularized area. Trauma can cause shearing forces to the ear, and this separates the perichondrium from the cartilage underneath. The space then becomes filled with blood and forms a hematoma, and this can lead to the following complications. A cauliflower ear, and a superimposed infection leading to worse cosmesis. Pinna hematomas arise out of trauma to the ear. It is important to rule out any other injuries to the base of skull and attend to any other facial injuries that may have occurred. Take note of any evidence of infection around the hematoma, such as erythema or purulent discharge. Pinna hematomas need to be treated promptly. Best results occur when the treatment is initiated within 24 hours of injury, otherwise patients have worse cosmetic outcomes. Pinna hematomas need to be evacuated at the time of their presentation, and hematomas less than 24 hours old may be drained with a wide bored needle and syringe, otherwise you will need to perform an incision and drainage. Patients' ears need to be suitably anaesthetized prior to any intervention. This can be done via an auricular block. First, place the patient in a supine or sitting position. Disinfect the skin at the base and superior aspect of the ear using a chosen antiseptic, such as chlorhexidine or betadine. Insert the needle into the skin, just inferior to the attachment of the earlobe to the head. Advance the needle posteriorly and superiorly and aspirate whilst advancing. Inject 2 to 3 mL of anaesthetic while slowly withdrawing the needle back to the original injection site. Then, redirect and advance the needle just anterior to the tragus and aspirate whilst advancing. Inject a further 2 to 3 mL of anaesthetic whilst withdrawing the needle, and then reinsert the needle just superior to the attachment of the helix to the scalp. Advance the needle posterior to the ear and inject a further 2 to 3 mL of anaesthetic whilst withdrawing the needle, and then redirect the needle to just anterior to the tragus again whilst advancing the needle under aspiration. Inject a further 2 to 3 mL of anaesthetic whilst withdrawing the needle. Give the anaesthetic some time to take effect and check to make sure that the needle is fully anaesthetized prior to any further intervention. Pinna hematomas that are not amenable to aspiration will require incision and drainage. First, you will need to explain the procedure to the patient and the risks and reasons for doing the procedure. Prepare a sterile field around the ear and include a vomit bowl to catch the contents of the hematoma. Thoroughly clean the area of the skin of the pinna and surrounding area using chlorhexidine or other antiseptic. Using the auricular block, anaesthetize the ear and make a small 5 to 10 mL incision horizontally below the helix to the he allow the hematoma to drain. This position allows for best cosmesis. Squeeze out the contents of the hematoma thoroughly. The skin around the ear will have some residual laxity. Irrigate the sites with normal saline after the pinna hematoma is evacuated. Next, pack dental rolls behind the ear and over the incision. Secure these with mattress sutures and then wrap a bandage tightly around the patient's head. Patients should be covered with antibiotic prophylaxis, typically oral comoxiclav, three times a day. Any patient with evidence of superimposed infection at the time of their presentation should be admitted and started on IV comoxiclav. In patients that have been discharged, bring them back to the emergency clinic in three to four days time to reassess for any further collection.